globalization has restructured the way film and television is produced throughout the world. Across the world, producers of television shows and movies entertain and educate viewers, take stances on issues, and pass on cultural or religious values. Some theorists argue that because of globalization, the West has secured a tight influence over the production and circulation of TV shows and movies. Western influence is not ignorable, yet there are many cultural producers that challenge the notion of Western dominance and influence. The global presence of television began in 1967 with the first live satellite production, as cited in Lisa Park's reading, Our World, Satellite Televisuality, and the Fantasy of Global Presence. The purpose of the first broadcast was to emphasize the liveness of the program and focus on the theme of population explosion. Over 500 million viewers from 24 different countries tuned in to see the broadcast. Despite being promoted as global, our world reasserted the superiority of the West and divided the world not only into first and third, but also as fast and slow. Since our world, advancements in technology have allowed for an even wider participation in the production and viewing of television and film. Even with greater participation, critical theorists have debated the power of Western influence on production. Havens describes how globalization has affected the way the ideals of childhood are portrayed through television. He asserts that the segmentation of the children's television market by global advertising firms creates lies within the industry about universal preferences of children. Producers of children's television attempt to appeal to a universal child, one that is predominantly a Western middle-class boy whose tastes derive from his developmental age rather than being influenced by his culture. Furthermore, the dominance of four children's channels in the U.S. market has made it almost impossible for independent producers to achieve commercial success. Although popular children's television is influenced by the West, local and indigenous productions do exist. The spread of technology has allowed indigenous populations to produce content that passes down local traditions and history to younger generations, as referenced by Faye Ginsburg in her essay Rethinking the Digital Age. These cultures see the globalization of technology as a means of furthering social and political transformation by inserting their own stories into national narratives. Globalization can actually be linked to new forms of cultural expression, as clarified by Manfred Steger in Globalization, a very short introduction. Steger references a sociologist, Roland Robertson, who believes that global cultural flows reinvigorate local cultural niches. This process is referred to as globalization, a complex interaction of the global and local characterized by cultural borrowing. The resulting expressions of hybridity cannot be reduced to simple manifestations of sameness or difference. Bollywood is a great example of the process of globalization. In Heather Tyrell's article, Bollywood vs. Hollywood Battle of the Dream Factories, Tyrell explains that although films produced by both groups have some similarities, Bollywood films are very distinctive and culturally relevant. Bollywood films encompass cultural, religious, and political beliefs, and typically feature song and dance. To locals, the films are seen as a way to resist Western cultural imperialism and retain nationalistic pride. Like Hollywood, Bollywood is a large profitable industry and is culturally influential. The Bollywood film industry's influence shows that forms of resistance to westernization can be just as powerful. Telenovelas also pose a threat to the ideal of western dominance in film and television production. Ibsen Martinez describes how telenovelas gained a prominent place in the global marketplace in his reading Romancing the Globe. During the 1960s, telenovelas gained popularity in Mexico, Venezuela, and Brazil. These shows appeal to a family audience, are very relatable, and they tell stories of everyday poor characters. Telenovelas became popular in developing countries, specifically Latin America and the Philippines, 
and even gained popularity in post-communist Russia. Like Bollywood, the producers of telenovelas threaten Western dominance, as many shows have beaten American imported shows and have found loyal audiences worldwide. As telenovelas become more popular, it is unclear whether they will maintain their status as being Latin American or if Hollywood will attempt to replicate the shows. When Hollywood producers attempted to replicate Bollywood films, they did not have much success. Hollywood may try to reproduce telenovelas, but the result will most likely be missing cultural aspects and will not be as popular as the shows produced in Latin America. There is no denying that globalization has drastically impacted the production of film and television. While globalization supports Western control of children's television themes, the spread of technology because of globalization allows for indigenous groups to pass along cultural beliefs to younger generations. Small-scale indigenous productions do not pose a threat to Western influence, but they are still significant and important to their producers. Conversely, Bollywood films and telenovelas retain individuality from Western productions and defy the cultural homogenization theory.